Ah oui, euh, bonjour le Geeky Taps, c'est moi le Old Geek et je suis ici avec un review vidéo pour le Dungeons and Dragons module X2 Castle Amber or Château d'Ambeville. And if you know the source material, you'll know why I have an empty lunch plate and mug just behind me. Published in 1981, Castle Amber was the second module to be released for the expert D&D game and was written by Tom Moldvay, who had recently been responsible for the rewriting of the basic D&D rule set. I played this module several times when I was a teenager, but only got to run it more recently using the fifth edition D&D rules. I converted the various statistics myself, as this was before Goodman Games released their version. Let's get presentation out of the way, and I'll be quite brief with presentation for this one. It's simultaneously wonderful, yet awful in places. It shows its age. The cover image by Errol Otis is iconic, and some of the internal artwork is pretty good. The maps are superb and Tom Moldvay's writing is as solid as ever. Sadly though, the art is extremely uneven and some of the internal pieces are, to put it mildly, terrible. X2 was Moldvay's love letter to Clark Ashton Smith's Avrania series, set in an alternate version of medieval France. I apologise here for never having read the source material. It was very much Moldvay's style to draw from literary sources. There was a pulp feel to his other basic and expert modules. Et maintenant, le spoiler warning. Si vous voudrez jouer cette module, stop watching now. The party begin in the wilderness. And after camping out for a night, they find uh, they, they awake to find themselves at the entrance to a luxurious palatial structure. The land around them is shrouded in a bizarre grey mist. If they venture into the mist, they find it deadly. Thus they are trapped and need to venture into the mansion to find out what has happened. And hopefully to locate a means of escaping. Immediately, there are similarities here to the killer red glow in Moldvay's reworking of B3, Palace of the Silver Princess. It's not a great intro, but I'll forgive it. Inside the chateau, the world has gone mad, quite literally. It's owned and dominated by the insane Amber family and contains all manner of monsters, inhabiting the most lavish and ostentatious of environments. The setting blends incredible luxury with an unrelenting deadliness, while displaying a dark sense of humour throughout. Eventually the party will find a gate, taking them to the world of Avalania itself. This is presented in less detail than the chateau, which is a bit of a shame but there is plenty of room for a DM familiar with the material to develop it further, and the module encourages them to do so. Avalania is an alternate Middle Ages France, complete with its own form of the Inquisition, targeting magic-using types. The idea of this chapter is for the party to locate a collection of specific items, which when combined will transport them to the resting place of the individual who trapped them in the chateau in the first place. While his methods are clearly decidedly dodgy, his motives are pure. And if the party succeed in reaching him and setting him free, the curse on his family will be lifted and they can finally rest in peace. X2 is an impressively beefy module. Despite the fact that a lot of page count consists of diagrams, background and new monsters, of which there are many, the sheer volume and variety of encounters is astonishing. 
Castle Amber itself is massive and its location based design presents a DM with immense freedom to work with it too. In order to be successful, the players are going to have to be at the top of their game. The unrelenting brutality of the module is reminiscent of the tournament adventures of AD&D, though it feels as though X2 has a smile on its face at all times, though it is mostly a sadistic one. Be aware this adventure is pure fantasy. It doesn't attempt to achieve any sense of realism. It's a barrage of magical and monstrous insanity right from the word go. And it works. My players absolutely loved it, despite my liberal use of bad franglais. Or maybe it was because of it. Because as a DM, I found the scale of the imagination present in X2 to be inspirational. And I went to town with the absurdity of it all. I learned French songs and had certain NPCs sing them at suitable moments and generally played up many of the characters. It encouraged me to bring more confidence to my own DMing and I think this extra energy had a significant positive on the game. I think this is key to making a success of Castle Amber. The group as a whole need to buy into the tone of the adventure. It is darkly humorous, it's not meant to make any sense, and you need to cast off preconceptions and expectations. This is one reason why I converted it myself. There was already a conversion available on DM's Guild, and it was free at the time. But I had to discard it, as it felt like the author had missed the point entirely. Too many monsters were direct reskins of generic 5th edition creatures. But one small detail was particularly egregious. Perhaps the single most memorable encounter in X2 is the ghostly feast, which is why I put my cup and plate there. It's a flamboyant and disturbing banquet that would not feel out of place in a Call of Cthulhu adventure. It has love, Lovecraftian overtones. If the PCs eat and drink, each course has a different effect. Some are positive, some are negative, very negative. All the effects are negated if the consumer of the meal saves versus spells. Thus a successful save could negate something that would be incredibly helpful. The person who converted it to 5th edition for DM's Guild changed this, citing the expectation of the system that successful saves were always positive and failed saves always negative. That simple disregard for the source material of the module prompted me to delete the PDF immediately and put in about 10 to 12 hours of my own work. Converting it wasn't easy, as there are a lot of new creatures and NPCs are numerous, but the reaction my efforts got from my players was so overwhelmingly positive that it made the effort totally worthwhile. About four years later, Goodman Games came out with their version of the adventure. I haven't got it, but one of my original players has, and he's running another group through it. He might be biased as he enjoyed the original adventure so much, but he has talked highly about the new version. So clearly, I love this adventure. But, and you knew a but would have to be somewhere, it isn't perfect. I would have liked to have seen a little more depth in Avawania, for example. And the final sequence of Guardians to reach the ultimate tomb of Stephen Amber feels lazy. My players picked up on this too. After all the wonderful weirdness of the rest of the module, the linear procession of generic fights that needs to be endured to reach the ultimate goal is pretty pathetic. An adventure, an adventure should save the best till last, and not end with something that a ten-year-old could generate using random encounter tables. But I am being picky there. X2, Castle Amber, is expert D&D's White Plume Mountain. It's a themed funhouse, packed with imagination and surprises. It's unapologetically lethal, 
ridiculously entertaining, extravagant and illogical. My rating is a thoroughly deserved 9 out of 10. While Gygax was king of the AD&D line of adventures, Tom Moldvay ruled the roost in basic and expert D&D. And to finish, Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous, sonnez les matines, sonnez les matines, din, din, don, din, din, don. God, I can't sing. <laughs>